Hey YouTube. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, routers and tool buying philosophy. Um, I, I used to work for about 10 years in the scuba diving industry as a mechanic. I've worked as a mechanic my entire life and uh, I went through a job interview at one point where the owner asked me, so if you were in the middle of a job and you had to buy a tool, where would you purchase the tool from? And he gave me three options. Would you buy from, uh, in this case, scubatools.com. It's a specialty place that sells very specialized tools. The equivalent in woodworking would be like Veritas or um, buying a shopsmith or something very, very specified. Uh, he said, would you, would you buy from there? Would you buy from Lowe's? Or would you buy from just your local down the street Harbor Freight? And I kind of was sweating the question because I didn't know what a Harbor Freight was at the time. Um, and what I told the, uh, the owner is that uh, I would always want to spend as much as I could on a tool and buy quality. My philosophy when it comes to tools is there's nothing more useless in this world than a tool that doesn't do its job properly or, or a tool that breaks. Uh, so I'd always prefer a high-end tool, but there is something to be said for a tool that comes with a warranty, like something that you buy at Lowe's, um, where you can just bring it back and you can return it. Uh, so I, I say that to say this, um, my idea with a tool is you buy it once, you buy the nicest thing that you can afford so that you don't have to buy it again and it's not going to crap out on you. Um, that being said, I took a chance when I purchased this laminate trim router from Menards. Um, this is a Performax brand, I guess it's an in-house brand of Menards. Uh, I knew better getting into this considering my philosophy of tool buying and I actually worked at a Menards for about three months. I know that what they sell isn't the greatest quality, but uh, I view this type of router for the woodworking that I do as like a luxury item. I already have a very nice Bosch 1617 EVS with the plunge base and I've put it in this little um, Stumpy Nubs inspired mini router table. Uh, I've also got a really nice Craftsman and then uh, old school Stanley hand plane, but that's a different story. But I decided I wanted to get a laminate trim router just to have something smaller and more compact, and I didn't think that I could beat the price. Well, I can't beat the price. For $32 for this, it was really, really hard to beat the price. So I figured I'd take a chance, and if it didn't work, uh, I would return it. And, well, I'm going to be returning this thing. I'm really, really not happy with it. So I want to show you a couple things that I noticed with this. Uh, right out of the box. Uh, the first thing is, well, the base plate sucks. Uh, this base plate, I'm not sure if you can see in the image, but it's kind of a uh, kind of a wavy shape to it. This bottom is not flat, so if you're bringing this over something, you're simply not going to get the accuracy that you want moving this over uh, a piece of wood. The other thing is uh, the screws here that come with the base. Uh, are just like a plastic self-tapping screw. They screw into this base. It's not a threaded hole. So this base isn't really designed to be taken off and put back on, although I made my own uh, semi-nice um, removable base for it with these handles so it's a little bit better. But most routers come with a hole in them that's threaded, like a, a metal case that's threaded. Um, this doesn't, so right off the bat that base is no good. There is a little light inside of here, and so that's nice when you're working with this thing. You've got a little LED light to illuminate your workpiece, so that's nice. Some of the other trim routers have that, so um, that's a nice feature. But again, the base is really, really poorly made. Um, if you're handy, if you're into you know making your own base, then you can do that. But uh, if you're a beginner and you don't really have the tools and the drill press and everything needed, uh, you may not be able to. The other thing is uh, this mechanism that allows the router to be adjusted up and down. You move this dial, which moves this piece of kind of all thread, and that engages with this lever here, and that's what allows you to move the router up and down. Well, out of the box, this is very tight and very hard to move up and down. I remedied that with a little bit of beeswax uh, going up and down these threads and then additionally beeswax on the case of the router and on the base. That did 
fixed the issue and allowed it to adjust up and down um, smoothly. So those were two kind of annoyances that if you're handy and you're willing to put the work in, um, you can adjust. But I'll tell you where the absolute deal breaker is for this um, plun well, this uh, laminate router, and this is why I'm replacing it, uh, and that is the collet. So I was using this on a project, and I was just using this uh, chamfer bit. I was only taking a small, maybe a quarter inch of material away, and the bit began extending. It began to um, come out of the collet. And uh, what I'm noticing is that this collet is simply poorly designed. First of all, the threads are a little bit chunky. Uh, this doesn't move up and down very easily. But something that I notice when I look close, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that on camera, maybe I can add some stills in here. But this collet, this little um, tapered piece, has gouges right here. And those gouges are where it's contacting the shaft of the router. And then as you can also see, there's only a single cutout here that allows this collet to open and close and tighten around the shaft of the router bit. And what seems to me is happening is when the nut is tightening down around this collet, even pressure isn't being applied all the way around this taper. The only place pressure is being applied is where this wear area is and therefore um, it's binding as it's being tightened and it's not squeezing onto the uh, the shaft of the of the router bit and that's what's allowing that router bit to come loose. So right off the bat you know I looked at this router as it was uh, just a um, an expensive router that would do just as good of a job as anything else and the issues with the base and the adjustability were things that could be adjusted um, could be kind of um, modified a little bit to work better but after using this thing and seeing that shaft come out um, and seeing how the collet is designed um, I think that this tool is unsafe as it stands um, maybe you can go in there and you could put some lubrication in there, maybe you could take a file to it, but that's not something I'm willing to do uh, with a tool that's spinning a piece of steel so quickly. So this is going to be going back to Menards and uh, we'll see I guess what I replace it with and where I go from there. So uh, this thing's around the $32 price point, um, which seems to me to be geared towards new woodworkers, people that are just getting into uh, doing some w weekend woodworking and things like that, which I think makes it even more sketchy for people to purchase because somebody just getting into this is going to be uh, attracted to that kind of price point. But hopefully you guys don't make the same mistake that I did and uh, I suggest spending a little more money and getting a router that's a little bit better. So uh, thanks for watching. That's my first YouTube video ever. I don't know if I'll actually be making more, but uh, there is a review of the Performax laminate trim router. I hope you guys have a good day.